Well, when you came home, who uh, <coughs> you weren't asked to talk about it. Everybody just wanted to squash it. We wanted to forget it. But you couldn't forget it. You thought you did. But it was in your subconscious. When we left Sydney, we, we knew we were going somewhere into, into the islands. We weren't sure where we were going. We thought we were going to Rabaul. Because I think that was where we were originally intended, but the Japs had come into the, into the equation and we couldn't... The, the 49th Battalion had been in Moresby for uh, nine months, I think, at that stage. They were down to about 350 men. We had the 53rd Battalion joined the 39th on, on the Aquitania. Some of them came onto the boat in civilian clothes. That was the training they had. We at least had a rifle and learnt a little bit of drill. But the, the 53rd Battalion, the last of their recruits, were more or less picked off the street and onto the boat. They never had final leave. They, they weren't even told, allowed to ring their parents and tell them they were going. We, we were a battalion of Chocos, which was militiamen. And there's a poem, there's a poem that I've got, it's in a lot of books, The Chocolate Soldier. They thought the we were cho called Chocos because they thought we'd melt in the sun and we wouldn't be able, wouldn't be able to fight. Well, Larry took uh, Bert Kingsbury down to the, to the rock where he was stationed. Larry Downs took him down and told him to stop behind the rock. He said, don't come out. <clears throat> but with the rush of adrenaline, Bert came out and was hit by a sniper but he did a lot of damage before he was hit. Well, <clears throat> I've been told since that somebody, a voice said in the, in the midst of it, these bastards can fight. He said, who do you mean? The Japs or the bloody Chocos? He said, bloody both. And that, I think, did a lot to establish the Chocos weren't chocolate soldiers because to this day the 2nd 14th Battalion and the 39th Battalion are very, very close cobbers. Well, we'd lost Major Owen in Kokoda on the 28th of July. He had come from the 2nd, 22nd Battalion and put in charge of the 39th Battalion because Colonel Conran was a first war man, he'd been sent home. But Colonel Owen was killed in Kokoda when the Japs attacked first attack on Kokoda. And then Colonel Cameron, uh, Major Cameron, from the 2nd, 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 22nd took over as our commanding officer. He got the idea that we should attack Kokoda, C Company down one track, D Company down another track, and A Company down the centre, down through the rubber. The next morning, about half past 10, 11 o'clock, uh, as troops coming down through the rubber, oh, this must be C Company. It was C Company all right, it was C Company Japs. So we were out and down behind the rubber trees that was our protection. It was in one or two trenches. I know I ran out and dropped down behind a rubber tree. We tried to drop in the same rubber is planted the same as an orchard, approximately five metres between trees. I just laid there and kept my head down. After I estimate about an hour and a half or something, fire fighting had been going on. I started to lift my head and have a look. And the voice says, keep your bloody head down, you fool. I'm getting a shot away occasionally to keep their heads down. 
who's on your right? So I turned my head very gingerly to the, to the right and had a look. I said, Norm Watkins, and he's dead. He said, yes, Frank McLeod's on my left and he's dead. He said, keep your head down, which I did. On dusk, <coughs> we got word to withdraw to a trench which was half left behind us, or behind me. Five of us called, got into that trench. We sat, I sat in the bottom on one end of it. It was a U-shape. I sat in one end. The, the surface came to approximately three inches below my shoulder which meant that from there up I was above ground. We were sitting in approximately three inches of water with your knees up to your chin. And that's where we spent the next 20 hour, 24 hours. I don't know, somebody must have got out because Larry Downs told me later that both McLeod and Watkins were shot fair between the eyes, which meant they'd been shot by a sniper. Being so close with men, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, you uh, become really close. Even if you don't, might not know his name. You might not know the names sometimes, but he's still a mate because he's right beside you. I can walk up to any man who's in the 39th Battalion. I don't care if I don't know his name. I guess, hello mate, how are you? There's a feel, was a firm handshake and a hug. And we're good. Because you never forget your mates. <laughs>